Today, I am going to go over what I promised you, which was this thing that I wanted to do once I reached a certain subscriber amount, and I did it, so now I'm putting my money where my mouth is. So I want to show you guys how you could do HDRs really cheap, but the first thing I want to warn you is this is not really like a hardware thing. This is just more of like the technique, okay? So the way I captured these images, just straight off the bat, is I used a camera that I've had maybe five years now, this little thing, and I'll have it up on the screen. It's called the, the Rico Theta, and this is like the first version of it. So it doesn't take, these pictures aren't crazy impressively sharp, but for HDRs, you honestly, you don't really need that. And unless you're going for, I guess, some sort of macro thing where it's like, it's just like anything, where if you need the detail, you need the detail. So it's not so much a tutorial on how to use that camera. You could get the camera. I'm sure there's like tons of others, but basically this camera has, well, it's sort of two cameras. There's one on each side. And what it does is it try to it tries to erase itself, but it, it takes a 360 panorama. So uh, let's just go to that really quick and we could just mess with it. And we'll just show you the tilt here. This is on my balcony. So you can see it's taking every single angle okay so you have you can pan around on it just using the tools in there and this is where it tries to erase itself but this is also let me go back how this works is you take a series of pictures and they're all lined up here but i'm going to just show you with uh two photos hdri stands for high dynamic range image and the reason it's high dynamic range just like singing if you have a the dynamic range or, or, or range let's just say ranged okay let's break it down to its basics it is what is your range like if you sing really high or you sing really low well we could look at it both ways where it captures it in different exposures and then combines it into one file okay so here's just the the parts of the whole okay and essentially what it allows you to do is i'm just going to lower the opacity and then i'll go into the other one so it's allowing you to capture all of the image data from this very overbright to uh, just normal, okay? And you could take as many bracketed, it's called bracketing, as many of these as you want, okay? So what I wanna show you is, you can see the quality, again, it's good enough, but I'm just gonna turn up the exposure right here and then just keep that in mind. So, cause I've, I noticed right here, so, this is gonna break the image, but see how it's getting washed out, okay? Now, I only took about 10 photos, so it's nothing crazy, like the HDR is not this insane thing, but I'll zoom in here, and then I have this exposure here. Now, if you watch as I'm turning it up, see how it's not getting blown out and artifacted? At a certain point, it will, but it's not, okay? And then if I go the other way, you can see how all of the information is still held in there, okay? And that's why it's high dynamic range. It's just a very dense image file, all right? So today I'm just gonna go over how to do it because it's basically automated in Photoshop and it can take you five seconds. And then I'm just gonna render a, a, a just a quick scene in Houdini just to show you. It's not a Houdini tutorial, don't worry. The next video, I'm gonna show you how to set it up in Element and how to get like the, the best out of it, especially out of Element using an HDR that you made, okay? So I'm gonna hop over to Photoshop. Okay, we're in Photoshop. Now we're gonna to go to Automate and you have this Merge to HDR Pro, okay? And then all we have to do is, let's just do the folder, okay? And right here I have my the ones I said to use, because I have other photos in here from other tests, but I, these were the ones that came out the way I wanted. So I'm just gonna tell it to use that folder. It's gonna load all of them in. Let me remove this guy, because that's the one that I made. And then we're just gonna hit okay. So now it's just gonna automate this entire thing for you. Okay, so it's gonna stack them. And you can see over here that just the different exposures essentially so then you're going to be met with this window i am not going to do a 32-bit i'm going to do a 16-bit okay 
And one of the things I'm going to do is remove the ghosting. And what the ghosting is, is it's essentially like haloing from stacking. So even though these pictures are, they're taken from the exact same spot, they're still not taken, like there's still variations and it creates this sort of like halo-y thing around the edges, okay? So we can get rid of that. And I like to do out of the preset, just flat. Okay, it kind of, again, just does that. And let's remove ghosting. Okay, and again, this camera is older. They have a way better version, but I'm sure if you found this thing, it is probably super cheap and I, I use it all the time. So, I mean, this is essentially it. It stacks it, all right? And then let's see. So remove ghost, 16 bit, hit okay. It's gonna create the file. You can see down here all the different brackets. Okay, and now we have the HDR. So it's the same thing that I had up here in After Effects, and I could turn this guy off, turn the exposure off. You know what, let's just make a new one right here. And here it is, okay? So it'll automatically stitch together. And now that you know how, I'm just gonna show what it looks like in Houdini. I'm just gonna do a quick scene, all right? Okay, so now we're in Houdini, and again, I know this is for After Effects. You don't have to pay attention to any of this. We have our HDR that I made, just loaded in here. All right, and I'm just gonna click Enable Background so we can see it. Okay, so here's the cool thing. If I move my camera around, you can see no matter which way it is, it's gonna be in the scene, so it's gonna be reflecting it. So let me just... Okay, so here it's in here, and I wanna shut this off just so we can do a quick render. And I'm gonna shut this off. So here it is without it. I just have depth of field, just using Redshift. So fitting it, okay. And then I will turn on our background and render it. Try that again. Excuse me, enable background. So now you can see we have just the environment. That's how you make an HDR. What's cool is, uh, you know what? Let's just go to our scene view, lock the camera. Let's see if that does anything. As you can see, it's going to update with it, right? And again, this is just just to show you how sort of like what to expect uh, next week. We'll do this in Element, so don't worry. Don't be terrified of Houdini, just what I use. So that's basically it to create an HDRI. So see you guys next week and we will go over all of this cool stuff and do this in After Effects with uh, tracked footage. Because I mean, an, an image, standstill image is cool, but you know, Something that moves is even cooler. So so that's it, guys. I'll see you next week where we finish this up and have more fun. Later.